Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This video is about arthrogryposis multiplex congenita or multiple congenital contractures. Arthrogryposis multiplex congenita is a group of rare congenital disorders in which there are multiple joint contractures present at birth. This disorder results from limitation of the joint movement in utero. Intelligence is typically normal except in cases where arthrogryposis is a part of a chromosomal disorder or a genetic syndrome in which intelligence is also affected. There are two major types of arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. First is amyoplasia or the classic type. In this multiple symmetric contractures occur in the limbs. Affected muscles are hypoplastic and have fibrous and fatty degeneration. In this case, intelligence is usually normal. About 10% of the patient have some abdominal abnormalities due to lack of muscle formation. Most common of these abnormalities are gastroschisis or bowel atresia. Now, in this case, nearly all cases are sporadic. Second type is distal arthrogryposis. In this, only hands and feet are involved and the large joints are typically spared. These are a heterogeneous group of disorders which are associated with a specific gene defect that encode contractile apparatus of the muscles. Now many distal arthrogryposis are transmitted as autosomal dominant disorder, but X-link mutations are also known. Now the etiology. Arthrogryposis is usually caused by decreased fetal movement in the uterus. The fetus need movement in the limbs to develop muscle and joints. If the joints don't move, extra connective tissue develops around the joints and fixes it in place. Now, any condition that impairs in utero movement for more than three weeks can result in this condition. Now, some of the causes of decreased fetal movements include male formations or male functions of the central nervous system such as spina bifida, brain malformation, or spinal muscular atrophy. An inherited neuromuscular disorder, such as neuropathies, myopathies, including muscular dystrophies, myotonic dystrophy, myasthenia gravis, or multiple sclerosis. Then maternal infection during pregnancy, such as German measles or rubella, or rubiola, which is also called measles. Other causes include maternal fever above 102.2 Fahrenheit for an extended period of time or increased maternal body temperature caused by prolonged soaking in hot tubs. Then maternal exposure to substances that can cross the placenta and harm the fetus such as certain drugs, alcohol or anti-seizure medication such as phenytoin. Now too little amniotic fluid or chronic leaking of the amniotic fluid which may limit the space for fetus to move around can also result in arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. Now the symptoms and signs. Arthrogryposis multiplex congenita is not a progressive disease. However, the condition that causes it may be progressive, for example, muscular dystrophy. Now the deformities are prominent at birth. Affected joints are contracted in flexion or extension. In the classic manifestation of AMC, shoulders are sloped, adducted, and internally rotated. The elbows are extended, and the wrist and the digits are flexed. Hips may be dislocated and are usually slightly flexed. Knees are extended, and feet are often in the equinovarus position. Leg muscles are usually hypoplastic, and limbs tend to be tubular and featureless. Soft tissue webbing sometimes occur over the ventral aspect of the flexed joints. Now the spine may be scoliotic. Except for the slenderness of the long bones, the skeleton appears normal on the x-ray. Physical disabilities may be severe. Some children may have primary central nervous system dysfunction, but intelligence is usually unimpaired. These children have small immobile jaws, so endotracheal intubation during surgery may be difficult. 
Now, other abnormalities that rarely accompany arthrogryposis include microcephaly, cleft palate, cryptorchidism, and cardiac and urinary tract abnormalities. These findings raise suspicion for an underlying chromosomal defect or a genetic syndrome. Now the diagnosis is by clinical evaluation and testing for the cause. If a newborn has multiple contractures, then the initial evaluation should determine whether the condition is amyoplasia, distal arthrogryposis or another syndrome where multiple contractures are associated with unrelated congenital anomalies or metabolic disorders. Now a syndromic form of AMC is suspected when developmental delays or other congenital anomalies are present and such patients should be evaluated for central nervous system disorders and should be monitored for progressive neurologic symptoms. Evaluation should also include a thorough assessment for associated physical, chromosomal and genetic abnormalities. Specific disorder to be sought include Freeman-Sheldon syndrome, Holt-Oram syndrome, Larsen syndrome, Miller syndrome, multiple pterygium syndrome, and D. George syndrome. Testing typically starts with a chromosomal microarray analysis and this is followed by a specific gene test. Electromyography and muscle biopsy are useful to diagnose neuropathic and myopathic disorders. In classic AMC, muscle biopsy typically show amyoplasia with fatty and fibrous replacement of the tissues. In the newborn, early diagnosis can be made by clinical evaluation and an AMC specific gene panel test by using the next generation sequencing technology. This can establish a definitive etiology in about 68% of the cases. Now, whole exome sequencing should be considered when other tests do not yield a definitive diagnosis, especially in familial cases. Now, the treatment of arthrogryposis multiplex congenita. This is by joint manipulation and casting and sometimes surgical procedures. Early orthopedic and physical therapy evaluation are indicated in this case. Joint manipulation and casting during the first few months of life may produce considerable improvement. Orthotics may also be helpful. Now surgery may be needed later to align the angle of ankylosis, but mobility is rarely enhanced. Muscle transfers may improve function, for example, surgically moving the tricep so that it can flex the elbow. Now many children do remarkably well. Two-thirds are ambulatory after the treatment. Okay friends, thanks for watching. Please like, share, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more informative health videos.